Hi guys and welcome to the channel. <laughs> hey guys and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna tie a sand shrimp or a version of the pink piglet. And the only difference between the normal and the classic pattern here is that I've changed out the back shield with some of this this latex material right here. Um, it's not something I've used a lot, but it's certainly Way, way, way better to emulate the exoskeleton of the shrimp. You can see this very nice segmentation down here. It's, it's, it's very easy to tie with, and it looks like a million, so why not? Um, this fly, we're gonna start out with a light stinger size 4. You could tie it in a 6 or a 2, but I think 4 is a very nice standard size for shrimp uh, on the Danish coast, that is. And we're just gonna start out with a right thread here, with a GSP thread. You can use a tan or something like that, or you could color it in with a marker. I don't really, I don't really do something like that. <laughs> but uh, I'm just gonna start out with a layer of thread here to make sure all of my materials gonna stay the same way. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is just take a little bit of dubbing and just gonna make a small firm ball here in the back of the fly. And the the best way to describe what this does is just it's lifting all the materials out of the way. And if you have ever fished with a space shrimp, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All of these very loose, very light space fibers is going to make its way down to the, to the hook bend. It's going to make it really difficult for you to, to, to fish the fly continuously because you're going to use all the time just staying in there and plucking out fibers from your hook. So this is going to help it and also something we're going to do later, but I'm going to come to that. So. Putting a little bottle of dubbing down here, and then on top of that, I'm gonna take one of these natural metal feathers to make the mouth parts of the shrimp. Just gonna plug out all the fluffiness, and we're just gonna take out the point here. That's a bad feather. Here we go. I'm just gonna take out all the fluffiness underneath here. I'm just gonna find the tip of the f of the feather, and I'm gonna pluck that off as well. And what that does is making me able to just tie in on top here, just a few loose turns, and then I can just pull the feather in where I want it, like that. I don't want it too long. I just want an indication of something darker in between the spay heckles, You know, the mouth part of the shrimp. This this is very optional, but. I think it looks good, so there we go. Make sure it's on top. Tying it away back. And we're gonna take a spay hackle now. And the rule of thumb for me when I'm tying these spay hackle flies is I want the spay hackles to be approximately one and a half to two times the length of the entire hook. This way you can make the same proportions as all your flies. There we go, not bad at all. Just gonna find the tip here and just take all these fibers backwards. And I'm gonna tie in the feather at the tip here. Twine it down a little bit and then fold it over, and tie it in double. There we go. Take your hackle clamp and clamp the spay feather. Get this out of the way. I'm just gonna take a little bit of saliva here and then just take these feathers, all these fibers, in one direction. This is gonna make it easier for you to, to wrap these lively feathers here. I'm just gonna take these wraps very close and don't worry if you get too far towards the eye because I'm gonna take the thread and just gonna wind down all of these fibers anyway. But I'll see you. I'll show you that in a minute. If you accidentally catch something here, just take out your dubbing needle and just pull out like that. I'm gonna need one more here. Like this. Catch the stem and tie it off.
Just cut the stem there. Make sure it's tied down. And then I'm gonna do something a little unorthodox here. I just wet my fingers a little bit. And then I put all the fibers on top here. And then I'm gonna start tying it down. All the way to the ball down here. And what this does is making sure that a lot of these fibers that really the the one that's getting caught in the bend down here is secured on top here. And as you see the finish fly, it's not gonna make a fin fly underneath or anything like that because we make a, a huge palmer hackle as well in these flies. Yeah. So it's just gonna make sure that we eliminate as much as possible about that that problem. Perfect. And then we're just gonna take a little bit of dubbing again. It's just to make a cluster down here to or a ball of dubbing to lift the eyes and the back shield. So just gonna make this nice and tight as well. The tighter the better. Tie the thread right in front. At this point if you want to you can give it a little bit of weight as well. I'm gonna do that. Just trying to fly around. here. I can cure the clean up nicely. If you have exposed material it's going to be very difficult to put in your dubbing afterwards. Take your time. There. And then before I put in the eyes I'm just going to take a one strain of of ripping. This is just a 16.5 millimeter fluke carbon ribbing or a liter. You can use whatever you have at hand. It could be nylon, it could be anything. But don't go too thick because it's gonna make it very difficult to make the segmentation because the, the, the ribbing is so thick. I'm just gonna make a small knot, you know, just a very simple half hitch, like so. Just tighten that up. I'm just gonna catch this with the fi with the with the firing thread here, and just gonna pull in the knot till it connects. I'm just gonna tie it down on both sides. This way, it's never gonna go anywhere. And if you ever taught it, uh, ever ever made a spade fly, having the ribbon come undone and delay very at last, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want that. There we go. Now it's time to put in some eyes on this line. And this is just easy shrimp eyes in black. I'm tying in right above this plastic part where it connects. This is making it more easy for me to adjust the eyes individually afterwards. Like so. I'm just gonna take a very sharp scissor and cut this plastic into a point right here. If you tie in all this plastic material all the way down, it's gonna be really hard to make a simple elegant fly in the end. So just chop it off there. There we go. And last but not least, we're gonna make a feather for the body here. And this is just approximately half the length in the fibers as the tail is. Just take out all this fluffy part right here. Just tie this in on the side. Laying it double and tying it off. Okay, then. Now we're going to make a dubbing body. And for this, I'm just gonna take some STF salt water and sand as I did before. But I'm also gonna add a little bit of this ice dubbing. Just to make a hint of it, a little 
a little bit, little bit of dubbing here, a little bit of glistle, like that. It's not much, but you can see these tiny flash fibers. It's gonna make the world when it comes to the water. I promise. And making sure this dubbing body is very tight as well. If you make a fluffy body or a not tight body right here, it's gonna make it very difficult to make this streamlined fly afterwards. And when you start brushing out the fibers, you kind of brush out some of the duffing, you're gonna see the the underbody of the fly, and you don't want that. It's not pretty. There we go. Making a nice tapered body here. Making sure to wind the dubbing on the thread after each tape here. This is a very nice way of making a dubbing body because it's gonna be really nice and tight here. And if you make something like that, you can just take your session and trim it. Here we go. Time to wind the hackle. Just trying to take the hackle clamp to the point of the feather here. And I'm going for approximately five turns here with even spacing. The more even your spacing is, the more pleasing the fly is gonna look to your eyes. So this is a good place to be a little cautious. Like so. Like so. And I'm gonna take my topping brush here and just gonna make sure I don't have anything stuffed before I cut. Go. It's also to make sure there's not too much material on top where I'm gonna lay the back. Now we're gonna cut out this latex, this flash skin. And I'm gonna take a sharp scissor with a really long blade. This is gonna make it so much easier to make this right cut. If I take my small scissor right here, it's, it's, it's hard to navigate and get a straight edge. So a big, a big scissor here. I'm just gonna cut approximately this, the, thic the thickness of the fly and add a little bit because when you tie this in like so this material is very elastic so you can actually control the thickness of the back by just pulling this before you're putting in your ribbing this is a very nice feature. I Meaning you can always get the perfect proportions with this. And that's always nice. Just gonna get out the rib. And this is a very soft brush. It's as simple as a soup brush very much. And it's the only thing you can use really to take out these very delicate fibers without messing with the dubbing. So it's a very nice tool to navigate these spay hackles. So just pull back, catch it, make sure you don't fold it. There, taking out my soft brush here, getting all of these fibers to the side. And you can just see how easy it is to take these fibers away without taking out any dubbing or anything I don't want, like so. Make sure your segments gradually get smaller as you're going towards the whole guy. Like that. Just gonna catch the ribbing up here and go underneath. 
like there. I'm just going to straighten this down and make a finish of the fly underneath the back. The goal here is to get as little thread on top as possible. There you go. Cut off the thread and the ribbing. Then you can see this long piece of up here. I'm just gonna cut it right between the eyes here. Right back of the pupil. Like so. And you can just take your thumbnail. You just squirm it around into place if it's not perfect. That's the last finishing touch. I'm just gonna take the steel brush dubbing and just brush out all these fibers underneath here. And just pulling it back. And that's the finished fly. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and you hope you can try along. Make sure to subscribe and check out the links in the descriptions and visit our shop. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.